Shavua Tov, good evening, welcome. In 1980, data was collected summarizing the accumulated fears of congregants, boards, and senior rabbis with regard to the hiring of women as rabbis. Among the apprehensions cited were the following. The Torah is just too heavy. Female rabbis are feminists only. Female rabbis wish to attract public attention to themselves. Women are too soft-spoken. Women do not know how to, nor care to, wield power or authority. It's true. Women will cry at meetings when pressured or criticized. And finally, if women can read from the Torah, preach and teach, the rabbi's duties become accessible to everyone. The mystique is lost. Well, my name is Jacqueline Fromer Cohen, and I am a fifth year rabbinical student at the Los Angeles campus of the Hebrew Union College. And this May, I will be the 587th female rabbi ordained in the reform movement. Who's more excited, you or me? I don't know. And FYI, on Simchat Torah, I carried that heavy Torah for seven hakafot, and I did just fine. Tonight, we are celebrating extraordinary women who are shaping Reform Judaism. Rabbis, cantors, board presidents, congregants, lay people, educators, writers, scholars, and musicians. Women who for the past 100 years have played a leading role in maintaining and shaping and evolving a meaningful Jewish life in the home and the family, as well as striving to make the world that we live in a better place. Our movement is overflowing with outstanding women who have done just that and more. Ruth Messenger, the president of the American Jewish World Service wrote, it is remarkable to consider the evolution of women's roles from the balcony to the bima to the boardroom. This progress would not have been possible without the vision, the perseverance, and the courage of reform women. In the late 70s, in an interview with a radio show, Rabbi Laura Geller of Temple Emmanuel of Beverly Hills was asked, what is more important, your Judaism or your feminism? And she replied, and what is more important to you, your heart or your liver? She later said, when women's voices are heard, a tradition changes. Indeed, our voice has been sung, and traditions have and are changing. We are grateful to the incredible women who have paved this path and the remarkable men who have supported them. We are inspired by the past, and we are committed to the future. And even with all the accomplishments we will celebrate tonight, 
The work continues. There is more to be done, and a new day is dawning. That's right, a new day is dawning. And that means you need to stand up. So come on, everybody stand up and put your hands oh together God. to this business, so brother. Really? Brilliant, thank you, yes. Come on. One, two, one, two. And I want to teach you some words. They go like this. sha la 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 moda ani all right? So listen first. Here it goes. sha la 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 moda ani Are you ready? Sing that with me. Here we go. sha la 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 moda ani Good. Next part, lefanecha. sha la 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 lefanecha. Come on, try that. One, two, three, go. sha la 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 Nice, let's put it all together, Moda Ani. Sha la 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 Moda Ani. Sha la 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 le paneha. You sound good, my turn, my turn. The sun is shining, it's bright light on me. I open my eyes so I can see. The birds are chirping. Everyone's awakening a new day arising it's calling for me singing sha la 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 moda ani i want to hear you sing le pane ha sha la 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 le pane ha ha i be kayam she hezata binishmati Bechem le rabba, la 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 I want to see a conga line develop. Come on, everybody. I can be anything I want to be. Now that my soul has returned back to me, I'm free to decide. It's all up to me, cause I can make today the best it can be, singing. sha la 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 There they go, come on, join in. le pa de ha sha la 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 le pa de ha ha pa de ha be ka ya she he he za ta bi ni shma ti you look good, you sound good too. Let's give it up for Matan on the food. Chirping, everyone's awakening, a new day arrives, and it's calling for me singing. Sha la 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 la
Debbie Friedman. And Frank. Okay. George Tafura. Golda Meir. Rabbi Geller. Besides my wife. Who is the most important Jewish woman in the world? Sarah. Leia. Esther. Elena Kagan. Anne Frank. Uh, Natalie Portman. Rabbi Rachel Timona. It's impossible to answer the question. Vora the judge. Just on the spot. Every Jewish yeah. preschool director would be Ricky Lake. Cantor Linda Cates. Ruth Messenger. Anyone, just tell me. <laughs> Laura Geller. Naomi Levy. Me? <laughs> Adrian Rich, who was a poet. Not Hoffman. And not Hoffman. And not Hoffman. Can you describe her in three words? Inspirational. A leader. Brave. Perseverance. Inspiring. Powerful. Visionary. A model of living a Jewish life. Beautiful. Brilliant. Gutsy. To look up to. Effective. The founding mother. Great teacher. Because she happens to be Jewish, I think it's wonderful that we... <laughs> Good evening. Many people in this room had the opportunity to interact with Jane Evans during her 96 years of life. I use the word opportunity very intentionally because interacting with Jane Evans provided a chance to learn, to be inspired, to be motivated, and to know what it's like to be in the presence of greatness. Whether you knew Jane or not, all of us here are the beneficiaries of her many contributions to Women of Reform Judaism, the Union for Reform Judaism, and the Reform Movement as a whole. Jane served this movement for more than 70 years, 43 of them as the executive director of what was then the National Federation of Temple Sisterhoods and is now Women of Reform Judaism. Jane Evans was a woman of countless pursuits and accomplishments, from mathematics to aeronautics and from labor law to music. At the age of 20, she, painted, she patented a design for an electric fan blade that is still the industry standard. And at the age of 80, springing from her deep love of Israel, she studied Hebrew. And at the age of 94, she was still piloting her boat and driving her car daily to the URJ offices in Manhattan. Although I will admit that fewer and fewer people were willing to be her passenger at that time. <laughs> but the thrust of Jane's life was her passionate pursuit of justice. She was a founder of the Jewish Peace Fellowship. She and the collective woman power of sisterhoods helped to rescue European rabbinic students in the 1930s. Jane, yes it is. Jane believed so profoundly in world peace that she took a leave of absence to join the U.S. delegation in the formation of the United Nations, and she helped draft the preamble to the UN Charter. Under Jane's leadership, National Federation of Temple Sisterhoods, now WRJ, supported the creation of the World Union, and our partnership continues to this day. We also became the founding patron of the Jewish Braille Institute, today known as JBI International. Justice, justice shall you pursue. And justice, justice did Jane pursue. We, the women of Reform Judaism, are Jane's greatest legacy because we live the values that she taught us. Jane passed away in 2004, and that year WRJ established an award in her honor that recognized other individuals for their achievements in the pursuit of justice. It is in that spirit, in Jane Evans' spirit, that we, Women of Reform Judaism, present the 2013 Jane Evans Pursuit of Justice Award to a most deserving recipient, Anat Hoffman.
in every aspect of her life and career, Anat Hoffman is incredibly deserving of this award. She is a humanitarian whose life and work exemplify the values and ideals that Jane cherished, particularly an immense respect for the dignity of every human being. In the Talmud, Kiddushim 29a, we learn that parents are obligated to teach their children three things, Torah, a worthy occupation, and how to swim. In all three of those areas, Anat Hoffman has gone me'al u'me'ever, above and beyond. Her drive and success as a swimmer won her local and regional medals. In 1972, Anat made Israel's Olympic swim team, giving both herself and the state of Israel a taste of what her perseverance could achieve. Anat took her drive to the floor of the Jerusalem City Council, where she served for 14 years as a warrior for justice and equality. As a woman who despised monopolies, she made sure for the first time that cell phone bills were itemized and that one company could not dominate the industry. Anat fought for adequate municipal services to be provided equally for all Jerusalem citizens, both Jewish and non-Jewish. Breastfeeding during city council meetings, Anat was a role model for thousands of working mothers. But most importantly, Anat launched Israel's first ever investigation into salary discrepancies between male and female municipal workers and discovered that women, on average, earned 46% less than their male colleagues. She fought for equal pay and made sure that a woman could make a living in her occupation of choice. Anat's love of Torah and her dedication and desire for religious pluralism brought her to the Reform Movement's Israel Religious Action Center in 2002. From this perch, Anat has become a leading voice in Israel, bringing the values and virtues of our movement into the national dialogue. She has been a tireless advocate, not only for progressive Jews, but also for Israel's minority groups, from gypsies to Bedouins, foreign workers to African asylum seekers, immigrants to Arab citizens. And of course, Anat is a relentless advocate for women. Believing that women should be seen and heard, Anat was among the founders of Women of the Wall. As their chairwoman, she is a persuasive campaigner who believes that the Kotel should be open to all, Jew and non-Jew, men and women, and especially to women who wish to pray in that holy space with a Talit and Sefer Torah. Like the Olympians of old, Anat represents the best of humanity. The torch she carries sheds light into an all too dark world and lights a path for all of us. It is a path that leads to justice, compassion, and tikkun olam, a better world. Just as Anat received the torch from those who came before her, her work serves as a beacon to those of us who would follow. Her unyielding demand that all of God's creation be treated with dignity and respect, her devotion to the Jewish people, her love of Israel and progressive Judaism, and her tireless dedication to improving our world make Anat most deserving of WRJ's Jane Evans Pursuit of Justice Award. She can't speak. <laughs> uh, 
My name is Noah Satat. I'm the director of the Israel Religious Action Center, and I get to work with Anat every day. I have good news for the lovers of irony. Anat lost her voice. <laughs> Despite all the remedies and chicken soup suggested by many in this conference, she cannot speak. Here are some words she asked me to share. Here's a useful tip from her. If you're destined to lose your voice, sometimes in the course of a 25-year struggle for equality, don't lose it in the Knesset. Don't lose it in a prison cell. Don't lose it in the Supreme Court. Lose it when you're approaching victory. Lose it in, at the 20, 2013 URJ Biennial in San Diego. <laughs> After flying all over the US, hugging and kissing so many people, a virus succeeded in silencing me tonight. But what a divine coincidence to teach me and all of us. I can be silenced, but everyone here can speak for me. Everyone here, everyone here knows there's more than one way to be Jewish. No one here is willing to be ignored on this point in Israel. None of us are willing to give up on the vision of Israel's declaration of independence as a state that ensures complete equality of social and political rights, irrespective of religion, race, or sex. Ladies and gentlemen, I will be a pretty hairdo tonight. Goodness knows you've heard me plenty. The video you just saw showed you the highlights of the struggle for equality at the Western Wall. Now we are a part of a team that is making history. Together with Rabbi Rick Jacobs, my brother, whose reason, passion, and courage make all of Israel's cabinet ministers look up to him. <laughs> and my colleague and friend, Rabbi Gilad Kariv, head of the reform movement in Israel. <laughs> Blessed by both profound ideology and superb analytical skills, who is leading the reform movement to a new era in religious life in Israel. Together, we are negotiating a new reality for all of us at the, at the wall. This is not going to be a slightly cleaned up, second-rate area for the misfits. It will be the first time that the Israeli government will offer everyone a real choice at the Kotel. I know Israelis are going to get used to the flavor of choice, and they are going to demand freedom of choice in all other areas of religious life, such as marriage, divorce, conversion, and education. One, <laughs> Once you have 31 flavors, you can't go back. <laughs> For too long, the face and character of Judaism's holiest site has been in the image of one extreme minority. But we are changing that. It is time that Israelis got to know some other faces of Judaism. That of our very own Rabbi Miri Gold. <laughs> or that of Ariela Finkelstein, our, four, our orthodox 14-year-old client who personally sued the, the bus driver who told her to go to the back of the bus in Beit Shemesh. We must plant our values the same way we have planted trees. This will require all of us to get our hands dirty, since there is no other way to plant. Our success at the Kotel must become the engine, pulling the train of religious pluralism. The, the next car is an end to gender segregation in Israel and the exclusion of women. We bring you news of great achievements tonight, but we also know that the rights of women in Israel are under attack, and it is unto us to provide the response. Other cars in the train are freedom of choice in marriage, in conversion, the full equality and recognition of our rabbis and institutions. I am standing on the shoulders of our incredible institutions and partners, 
on the generosity of IREC supporters over the year, I am standing on the shoulders of men and women who care about Israel, about Judaism, and about equality. I felt this throughout the biennial. Many asked me, what can we do? First, you have to make a decision. Are you going to wring your hands about Israel, or are you going to roll up your sleeves and get to work? You can't do both at the same time. Let's roll up our sleeves. I'm asking you to do four things. First, visit Israel and make your visits count. Make time for the Israel Religious Action Center. Fewer Roman ruins and more freedom rides. Read. At least once a week, read something about Israel which is not about security. Use your financial support to create an Israel that reflects your values. And last and most important, refuse. Refuse to choose between your liberal values and your commitment to Israel. Let you, your frustration motivate you to action. And for us at the Religion Act, Religious Action Center, action is our middle name. I want to thank the WRJ, laid by the remarkable WRJ director, Rabbi Marla Feldman, for their years of friendship, support, and solidarity. I am grateful to Lynn Magid Lazar and the entire WRJ board and look forward to working closely with Blair Marx as she assumes her new position. I am honored to accept this award with the full awareness that I could not have been here if not for the support of so many. I am literally speechless from, <laughs> from all the love you have, shown, you have shown me during this amazing biennial. Toda raba. Anat, 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 we have one more gift for you, Anat. Some have said that hell will freeze over before men and women will visit the Kotel together. <laughs> this photograph from earlier today shows HUC students living your dream. <laughs> no mechitza. No mechitza, no police, just God's creation as it was meant to be. Kol akavod v'mazal tov miyerushalayim.
most important Jewish woman in my life was my mother. My sister-in-law. My wife and two daughters. My mom. Who was my grandmother. My wife. My mom. I would say my godmother. My grandma. My mom. My, my sister. My mom. My wife. My mother. My mom. I'm a good Jewish boy. My wife. My mother. My wife. Can you tell us why? Beautiful. She's always been there for me. Feisty. Always there for you. Smart. Family. Strong woman. Always has way too much food. Caring. Pretty. Honest. Kind. Warm. Relentless. Nudging me about making sure that everybody's happy and healthy. Respectful. Dedicated. My sister. Can you describe her in three words? Probably not. Okay. <laughs> she inspires me to be the best person I can be. You gotta take 
take one small step for freedom. You gotta take one small step. One small step, you gotta take one small step for freedom. Thank you, Anand Hoffman. In 1913, the National Federation of Temple Sisterhoods, now the WRJ, created and published the first art calendar. The art calendar showcases Jewish artists to use their creative vision and talent to reflect on Jewish themes and to, to, and to develop them a larger and more acknowledgeable audience. In 1913, 4,700 calendars were sold. In 1927, 18,000 copies were sold. In 2013, 100 years later, hundreds of thousands of calendars have been sold, exposing great Jewish art to the masses. Lapses. Who decides how I'm a Jew? Who dictates what I have to do to claim my essence, to bond with my tribe? Bribes say you could make a difference. Why this rule and that behavior? I can't believe Mashiach would be that kind of savior. That demands we find the truth in just one way. Don't we get something to say?
In the year 1950, NFTS national dues were one dollar, plus an additional 25 cent district fee. That same year, a gallon of gas cost 94 cents, a gallon of milk, 20 cents, a loaf of bread, 16 cents, and you could actually buy a house for an average of Pray they will love with hearts wide open. We pray they will know how to speak their truths unspoken. We pray they will hold on tight to the ones they love. We feel good in each choice they make and trust in every step they take. This is our prayer. For the next generation, nation shall not lift up sword against nation. And may they never know, never know war. Oh, may they never know war. Oh, no, oh, may they never know, never know war. Oh, may they never know. Pray they will see. Pray they will know the way to peace unbroken. Pray they will do what's right, even when it's tough. And feel good when each day begins and trust the beauty is deep within. This is our prayer for the next generation. Nation shall not. Sword against nation, and may they never know, never know, won't oh, may they never know, won't oh, 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 may they never know, never know, won't oh, may they never know. Lo yisa goy el goy cheret, lo yimedu on milchama, lo yisa goy el goy cheret, lo yimedu. Lo yisa goy el goy hera, lo yimedu on milchama. This is our prayer for the next generation. Nation shall not lift a sword against nation, and may they never know, never know what oh, may they never know. Won't know, won't may they never know, never know, won't may they never know. This is the last fun fact for tonight, but a really important one. In 1965, the WRJ became one of the first religious organizations in the United States and the first in the reform movement to call for gay LGBT rights, demanding equality to all. These few fun facts were just a few examples of the extraordinary work of the WRJ to lead in tikkun olam, repairing and mending the world. I have opened up the Torah 
read aloud from sacred scrolls. I've been filled with fascination as my history unfolds. But today I read the Torah with the rest of Israel. If a man should make a promise, then his word must never fail. If a woman makes a vow to God, the same does not hold true. Her husband or her father must decide what she should do. The Torah that I cling to that wears a silver crown has left me out and led me down. Where am I in the midst of this commandment? Where am I? I am not between the lines. Where am I? Is my promise not important? Oh, how can I? Close my eyes, where am I? I search for explanations, I can't tell you how I've tried to find meaning in this passage that leaves me on the outside, but no one has an answer. Oh, can it really be that the rights and obligations are for someone else, not me? And where am I in the midst of this commandment? Where am I? I am not between the lines. Where am I? Is my promise not important? And how can I close my eyes? What will I tell your little boys? And what do I tell my little girls? I believe it's my job to find myself within a text that places me so neatly on the shelf. I struggle and I question, I criticize and doubt, but surely this is what our tradition's all about. And where am I? In the midst of this commandment, where am I? I am not between the lines. Where am I? Is my promise not important? And how can I close my eyes? That's a Jewish woman. My mommy. My grandmother. My big sister. My teacher. My cousin. You. Me. Okay. <laughs> my mom. Um. My dad. The rabbi. My um, grandma. Esther. Oh, is she Jewish? Uh huh. Yeah. What does she do that makes her Jewish? <laughs> what kind of Jewish things do they do? Shabbat. Laka. Nice. Philly. Always lets me help her cook. When you're so sad, that means your mommy can help you feel better. There is peace up high. 
high in the heavens I know there is peace up there bring it down I'll pray I'll try to help complete the whole but we need peace down here Bring it down, bring it down, and we will say amen. Bring it down, and we will say. Put your hands together, come on. WRJ, the Women of Reform Judaism, previously the National Federation of Temple Sisterhoods, has a, a long, wonderful 100-year history and was really at the vanguard of all the major movements within Reform Jewish life um, and really has always been there as the oldest and the, um, the largest of the auxiliaries of Reform Judaism to provide support for whatever was needed going forward. 
The first thing those women did was decide they wanted to educate rabbis. They came from congregations and where they realized the value of rab rabbinic leadership, and they collected money or raised money for the first scholarship at Hebrew Union College. Having programs where we have some of the students come and lead our services, I even see it more how what an impact the S Fund has made for them. The women of Reform Judaism were taking a lead in cutting-edge social justice issues. Uh, among the first resolutions they dealt with in the early 1900s, uh, dealt with immigration issues, dealt with women in what was then called Palestine, is now Israel. Um, so we were cutting-edge then doing what others had not even envisioned. The um, positions that we have taken over the, you know, over the last hundred years for women's rights, for reproductive rights, for children's rights, I was just blown away by the fact that this organization is at the forefront of powerful things that, you know, Jewish or not, are good for humanity. We were the initiators of Nifty. And all along the way, WRJ has had a very close connection with NIFTY, with our youth, with our Israel programs, with, with camps. Toro Women's Commentary was groundbreaking because it was authored by hundreds of women from all around the world. It has, obviously, a reform perspective, but many of the writers were not reformed. They were secular, they were orthodox, they were conservative, and they were reconstructionist. It's an epic work because women's voices had never been uh, formally introduced into Torah commentary before. We should be very proud of the things we've done and what we have made of a women's organization, of women who in 1913 wanted to be together and we've been building on that legacy. And we need to continue to build the legacy of reformed Jewish women being committed, spiritual, and um, wanting to make a difference. Mother's love and mother's hope Mothers shape the world we know, Mama, e -ma -ma -ma. Mothers worry, mothers feel, mothers know too well what's real, Mama, 